Hey, what's going on, everybody? I'm Dr. Boyce Watkins from theblackbusinessschool.com. I am um, in Las Vegas uh, on the Dr. Boyce Watkins Black Economic Empowerment Tour, and um, I um, am about to head to New York, um, uh, which where you can, if you want to come out uh, and meet me, feel free. Uh, you can buy tickets at thedrboycewatkinstour.com. Um, now, one thing I, I was really confused about is, uh, you know, the speakers, the list of speakers at Muhammad Ali's funeral. Um, you know, from what I just read, I saw uh, Bill Clinton, uh, Bryant Gumble, and Billy Crystal. Now, you know, I'm, I'm not sitting here saying that this wasn't something that Ali actually decided to do. Uh, I hear a lot of people saying, you know, oh, you know, it's not a big deal because I, this is this is this is what Ali wanted. And uh, if that's the case, then that's fine. Um, there's no greater hero in my life ever. That there ever has been than Muhammad Ali. He's always been number one, uh, right behind, uh, right next to actually Malcolm X and Angela Davis. And so um, I'm not here to dispute that. He's from my hometown of Louisville, so I always felt a connection to him in a lot of ways. But uh, this speaking list doesn't make any sense. I mean, you know, I guess sometimes people become mainstream and they change. Um, I don't know if this happened with Ali or not. Uh, I just know that. You know, the Ali that I knew in the 1960s really stood up for black people. And the white people hated him for it. All these white people acting like they love him now. Many of them did not love him back when he, back when we loved him. Back when he was, uh, you know, being thrown in jail, being attacked left and right, uh, being criticized for uh, standing up for poor black folks. Um, you know, and so I'm not here to say, again, that there's anything uh, problematic about these, these, speaker, these speakers at the funeral per se. Um, but I just, I would say I'm very disappointed. Um, Billy Crystal's a comedian. Um, you know, uh, Brian Gumble, he's, he's okay. He's, you know, he's a sports guy and he's good. Uh, but you know, uh, and you, you throw in Bill Clinton, Bill Clinton is the guy, you know, who incarcerated more black men than any president in recent American history. Uh, and so I guess sometimes we get around famous people and we kind of, soften our stance a little bit I, and again i don't know i don't know if, if you know as ali got older he changed or or and again this is not to criticize him at all i'm not criticizing him at all but i will say that uh this is not a eulogy i would want to attend this is not a eulogy that would represent the legacy that ali left you know ali's legacy was black people his legacy was standing up for black folks you know when he said Viet Cong ain't never called me nigga he was standing up for black folks you know, when he was out there in Africa, you know, with, with an army of black people behind him, he was standing up for black folks. So, you know, I just really don't, you know, when they called him a nigga, when they disrespected him and wanted to throw him in jail with the all-white jury, it was because he was black. So, given that this is his experience, I just don't understand why they can't have, you know, some prominent African-American, I'm to my real activists, you know, meaningful leaders on that stage with him. You know, um, I, I, I'm not going to suggest anybody one way or the other, but I would definitely say that there are plenty of black folks. I mean, this idea that we somehow I hear people that will say, oh, well, well those are his wishes and that's all we they, we just got to respect that. Well, I guess if the family confirms that this is exactly what he wanted, um, then, you know, it is what it is. But uh, at the same time, you can't you know, I, I get tired of people explaining and justifying why black people put it at the back of the bus. Why, you know, one of our greatest heroes of all time is still being uh, eulogized by white folks. Why everything that happens good in the black community has to be co-opted by white people. I'm sick of that crap. It makes me sick. It irritates me. You know, and so it doesn't mean I have some sort of disdain for white folks. You know, let's not twist it into that. But I do have a disdain for the fact that it seems that our oppressor occupies everything that we are, everything we own. Next thing you know, when 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 they're, they're talking about teaching hip hop history, it's going to be taught by white people. When they talk about uh, you know the, the legacy of some of the greatest leaders of all time, you know it, uh, in the black community, there'll be white folks doing all the commentary, uh, and black people will be sitting in the audience clapping, just so happy that white people have acknowledged something that we did. Well, you know what? There's some situations where black people at least deserve a seat on the bus. They ain't always got to be at the front of the bus. They ain't got to occupy all the bus. White people apparently are the only ones who have the right to occupy by the entire bus according to the way we think but at the very least there you know you got three speakers why not add two more throw in harry belafonte you know old school veteran who knows all about what black people have gone through throw in jim brown stood next to ali in his toughest toughest fights stop with this stuff billy crystal man i'm, I'm not going to that funeral I, I i have no interest love ali to death but i'm celebrating my own way that's it i'm dr boyce Watkins. take care guys talk to you soon peace